One of the most iconic venues in the country, Sun City, played host to the fifth leg of the Donaldson Cross Country Championship as the Force Fuel 450 hit the plains of the Pilansberg. In the production vehicle category, one of the most popular teams in the championship, Johan and Vanna Horn from Mullalan Toyota, claimed their first ever victory in Class T. Currently fourth in the championship, Gary Berthold and Siegfried Rousseau from Atlas Copco Ford Racing. The pair having recently booked their ticket to Dakar by winning the Dakar Challenge in Botswana. And the third Toyota in the top three, Dakar competitors Leroy Polter and Rob Howie. A good performance from Johan van Staden and Mike Lawrenson in the Atlas Copco Nissan moved them to sixth in the championship. Former Bok captain John Smith proved he's not just a good rugby player as he and Michael Whitehouse finished fifth, an incredible performance from the region racing celeb challenge team. Celebrations all round for the winners, the Horn brothers from Malalan. The season is still a little long, anything can happen still, but uh, so far so good. Castrol Toyota's Anthony Taylor and Dennis Murphy failed to finish because of a transmission problem, but they still topped the standings in Class T on 100 points, but they're just too clear of the horns, with Polt and Howie 17 points off the pace. From the Nationals to the Regionals, it's the same venue, Sun City, but a different race, the Force Fuel 200. The perfect mix of up-and-comers and veterans from the young to the fairly mature. Okay, Ricky, firstly, uh, exciting times for your nice family affair, this. Yeah, this is the first time that I now with the Anneke Rij. We have been doing Nationals, so we're not going to deep cut over here, but we're going to do the first regional and we're going to see how it looks. Yeah, I hope it's going to go good today. Another well-known face on the circuit, Dirk Pitta. Yeah, the Felix season is going very well. Unfortunately, the last race in Fredervoort, we had a breakdown. The first in, uh, we can't remember. It's the first time in a long time we have to walk back, but it's a... Uh, it's, uh, up to now, it's going very, very well. While Jason and Dion Fenter compete in the Nationals, the baby of the family, Dylan, will be in action in the Regionals. We're going to get out of this place. We're going to get out of this place. So, yeah, it's not easy to get out of this place. It's not easy to get out of this place. Well, we've got four out of four so far. Um, so, finishing, you get points. So, yeah, we're quite happy. We're on top now. So, uh, we're hoping to finish uh, at a good position today. Well, the veteran Tony Gavea kicking things off in the regionals in the special vehicle category. Starting very well in their bat spec zero, Francois Conradi and Andrew van der Verstezen. The pair were first to finish in class P in Barberspan in June, and while it's still early days, they look on course to do well this time round as well. No navigator needed for Francois Schmidt, going solo in a Sandmaster Magnum, and he's first in Class B. We saw them earlier, the famed father and daughter pair of Fricky and Annika Boerter. She may be shy, but she's not scared to bark out orders inside the bat spec 3. They're second in Class P. Some furious hooting there from Fricky. And finally, they're through. Competitors in the Force Fuel 200 run on elapsed time, meaning every second counts. Good to see Annika not holding back with their orders. Another man we heard from earlier, Tony Gavea, sitting alongside Michael. They're lying in third place in their bat spec zero. Currently lying second in class B, Martinez LaRue and Gustav Pinar. Sun City is undoubtedly one of the flagship events on the racing calendar and it's been going along since the 80s. Rickus Prinsler and Leila Larim are fourth in Class P in their bat spec zero, a popular vehicle in the specials. He's a legend in racing circles and he drives what he makes, Wolf Peter Fumfei, on his own and third in Class B. So after 80 Ks, Conradi and Van der Verstezen lead the specials, followed by Smith with the Boerters in third place. Speaking of the Boerters, big problems here, as their roof looks to have come off. But some quick thinking by daughter Annika, and the coast is clear, so clear in fact, that they're in first place. Superb teamwork from the family. Mm. 
They've dropped down to second position. Francois Conradi and Andrew van der Veste is in the terrain giving them trouble. Tony Gavay and son Michael are lying third. The pair showing why this event is renowned for its dust. It's simply everywhere. Not too far back, Rickers Prince and Leila Laram holding onto fourth position and looking strong. Two men who are extremely well known on the racing circuit, Heel Null and Ferdy Peter, so the pair are currently fifth in Class P. You can't miss the sunny disposition of David van Jaasvalt and Martin van Jaasvalt. Their bright red Sandmaster is sixth. We're back on board with Martinus LaRue and Gustav Pinar. The pair are first in Class B, but they've dropped down two spots and are lying seventh overall. And by the looks of things, they're destined to lose some more places. Second in Class B and eighth overall, Aaron Pretorius and Alexander Murison in an Orca Sandmaster. In ninth position overall, having dropped two places, the legendary Wolf Peter von Wein. Francois Smith also going at it alone, and you have to feel for him. His steering broke 10 Ks from the finish, and he dropped all the way from second to tenth. But the winners, the father and daughter team of Fricky and Annika Boerta. We got you eventually, and uh, yeah, my hat off to her. She helped me a lot for the first time, and uh, for a 15-year-old girl, it's uh, take my hat off to her. Well, so do we. In second place, Conradi and Van der Vestes, and while the Gouveas, Tony and Michael, claimed the last spot on the podium, just over five minutes off the pace. Moving to the productions in the Force Fuel 200, Dirk Pitter was back to his brilliant best in Class E, leading from the front in his Ford Ranger, alongside your Quervis Classens. In Class D, the father and son team of Jack and Sorrel Oersteisen were the men to catch, their Land Rover Defender going very well. Lying second in Class E, Regan Austin and Warren Force in their Toyota Hilux. The lights are already on for Henry Zermatten and Johan Kerb in the Ford Ranger, currently in third spot. As things stand, they're just off the podium. Rob Reed and Bodo Schwegler driving a fairly rare Mitsubishi Pajero. They motor through the Pilansberg. Peter Potkida and Donny Foss are holding on to fifth place. Their bright yellow Toyota Hilux simply unmissable. So after 80 Ks, Pitt and Klaassens are still out in front, followed by the Oerstesens, while Austin and Foss are third. Pitter has proven to be one of the best drivers in the Donaldson Cross Country Championship, and it's certainly showing here his lead doesn't look close to ending. Austin and Foss, meanwhile, have made a move in the overall standings. They have overtaken the Oerstesens and are second overall. The racing giants, Jack and Sorrel, are just one behind, but are still the frontrunners in Class D. Rob Reed and Bodo Schwegler have climbed up to third in class, the Matten and Kaber having fallen by the wayside. Young Dylan Fenter showcasing those racing genes that run through the family. He and Ruan Pierce are second in Class D and fifth overall. They remain fifth in class, but they've dropped to sixth overall, Peter Potkida and Donny Foss. Not forgetting the Northern Regions Club Series in Class Y, Naldo Peterson and Rudy Besaidnert were the only competitors. Over in Class Z, Gerd Stein and Tanya Berger dominated matters throughout the race in their Toyota Hilux. Up front, it was Pitt and Klaassens that tasted the sweet success of victory. It was a nice run today. Uh, I think luckily for our, our class easy, didn't, the rain was a little bit late, <laughs> <It's> late. <laughs> lucky for that, but uh, uh, luckily we started quite in front today, the dust didn't bother too, low, too much and we just took it flat up. So Pitt and Klaassens finished just over four and a half minutes clear of Austin and Foss, while the Oerstesens got the final place on the podium. Back to the Nationals and staying with Productions, but moving to Class S. Remember Class SP? was split into two in 2014. Class D 
and Class S. A sterling performance from Yanni Fiss and York's LaRue in the Rubicon Racing Tour to move them into second in the championship, despite missing an event early in the year. Finishing just under eight minutes behind them for a silver, so to speak, Willem Voss and Vanna Weiss in their BMW X3, having only competed in their second event this season, moving them to ninth. Rounding off the top three, the man whose company gave their all to this event, Luke Puerta from Force Fuel, well guided by Andre Vermeulen. Consistency has taken the Blumfontein base to Brain and Prailing to the top of the Class S standings. So despite their fourth place finish, the Brain and Prailing lead the overall standings on 99 points, 9 clear of Fissa and LaRue, while Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer are third. Let's catch up with our Dakar Challenge winners, Gary Berthold and Siegfried Rousseau. What was the feeling like going through that finish knowing that, that you had won it? Yeah, it was an absolutely incredible achievement. It's something that we've tried to do for the last three years and really try to get to the Dakar in that way through the challenge. Um, very happy, and, uh, but we knew the road ahead was not going to be an easy one. To raise the finance to get across the line in the Dakar is still a mountain of a challenge. We wish them all the best with their preparations. From the Dakar Demons to something a little smaller, the side-by-sides or Class G vehicles that have been a tremendous addition to the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. Taking top spots at the Force Fuel 450 at Sun City, Gareth Woolridge proving that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Him and Boydre coming first. Van Amostad and Henna Deploy grab second place. And a man known more for his exploits on two wheels, Brian Kappa alongside Jaco Swat finished third. The pair actually topped the standings on 97 points, while Leander Pinon and Carl Swanepoel captured fourth spot. But the winners, Woolridge and Dreyer. What do they think about the latest addition to racing? Yeah, I think it will. It's relatively cheap uh, motor racing. You know, everybody enjoys it. And at the same time, it's it's not slow. It's nice, it's nice quick racing. The cars are, are good. They've got nice suspension travel and it's comfortable. So I think it, it'll only get better. an Audi A4 with Xenon lights for only 3899 per month and receive a complimentary 20,000 km extension to your Audi freeway plan. Coming up this week on History in Motion, we have our second look at coverage from round five of the Midas Historic Tour from Pekisa. With the rain sending the drivers into a spin, expect some great action from the historic saloons. Mark cars. Formula Fords and the Endurance Race. All the action coming up on History in Motion, Ignition, DSTV, Channel 189. Welcome back. The latest addition to the Region Racing Celeb Challenge, John Smith. It really is uh, quite intimidating. Absolutely. I mean, someone asked me how I'm feeling. I said, I'm feeling semi-terrified. So I said, that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, I think, I suppose you, you, you got to have caution. I think the reason why everyone gets into the sport is that it is exciting. It's a petrol head's dream. It involves big engines, fast cars, amazing suspensions. But it also, there's a fair amount of caution in terms of how to do the sport safely and do it intelligently. So, yeah, I'm, I'm bloody nervous and I obviously want to get it right so that at least my driver can have a, have a good drive today and tomorrow. John wasn't alone. The other celeb, Jeannie D. Having a look around, is this anything what you expected? It isn't really. It's so much bigger than what I thought it was actually going to be. But it's really exciting. I mean, there's all these motorhomes and all these amazing trucks. You walk in there, there's sound systems, leather couches. It's very rock star, so I'm quite, I'm quite impressed. Yeah, you get to top in on those speeds and you realise how fast you're going over a track that you shouldn't even be on, on a, in, a, in a car. So it is just one of the most exciting and amazing experiences I've ever had. 
John and Michael Whitehouse came fifth in class at the Force Fuel 450, taking the Shark CEO to top spot in the Celeb Challenge standings, just ahead of Genie D and Curry Cup and Super Rugby hero AJ Benta. From the productions to the specials, now while Class T has seen the defending champions take charge once more, it's a different story in Class A, where many competitors are vying for the championship. In fact, defending champions Evan Hutchison and Donny Stassen from Motorite are yet to win a race, such has been the intensity of the competition. Capturing first place at Sun City, Lawrence Duplessis and Kimi LaRue. Another good performance from Quinton and Kali Silbalt and the elegant field bats see them at the top of the standings. In third place, Brett Park and VZ Pancel from Suzanani Plastics. The defending champions Hutchison and Stassen finishing in fourth place, which is three spots lower than what they wanted. KZN duo Daniel Brooks and Gavin Gray had their third finish of the season coming home in a respectable fifth place, but it was Duplessis and LaRue that took top honours. Their second place finish has seen the Silvolts climb to 88 points, a massive 26 ahead of Duplessis and LaRue, while for hardest and hardest Duplessis are third. On to another regional race, the S Core 250, part of the Natal Off-Road Motor Club's regional race program, with the start and finish at Lungela Lodge. The event played host to the cream of the driving crop from KZN. To get lost at the moment if I'm navigating, believe me. Now this is fantastic. It's the first time I've ever been here. I've never been in a, a car like this before. As you know, I was involved with motorbikes for 18 years. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But I've got a lot to learn. I think I'm going to learn, have to learn fast too. To be fair, some may need to learn a bit more and a bit faster than others, like David Cheek, who's driving for the very first time. Uh, yes, it is. Um, never done this before. Um, never done any type of off-roading ever in my life before. And uh, this is something of a new experience for me. In complete contrast, we've got Brett Holmes. Basically what he's saying there is yeah he enjoys off-road at Zaka and he's improving as we're getting the car together and as we managing to string two string budget. One man who certainly knows his way around a route is Arthur Barnes. And um, we're hoping for a good prologue because uh, that's definitely going to be a factor today. And then um, <clears throat> just focus on keeping it tidy and, and uh, trying to stay in front of our opposition for the championship. Well, stay in front they did. They being Barnes and his navigator Anthony Asher. The pair setting the fastest time in the prologue. Lying second on the grid, two men we see compete regularly on the Donaldson Cross Country Circuit, Daniel Brooks and Gavin Gray. Don Thompson and Wayne Foster will have to be content with a start from third after putting in a time of 22 minutes and 48 seconds. Just over two minutes further back, Reg Sutton and Warren Bienica. Rounding off the front five, another regular in the Nationals, Gary Campbell, but this time he has daughter Jess alongside him. First in Class B, Ian McLean and Luke van Dort, the pair having put in an impressive time of 23 minutes and 28 seconds. So Barnes and Ash will start off from the front, closely followed by Brooks and Gray with Thompson and Foster in third spot. As always with qualifying done and dusted, it's time for some brief R&R before the competitors hit the hard stuff once more. And it certainly is hard and tough, especially when it comes to dust. It's going to be problematic. I think it is going to be a very tight. Uh, we caught up to Don in the prologue and yeah, the dust was terrible. I think it's going to be a very big problem. So R&R &R for some, but nothing of the sort for most. Fixing and fine tuning is the name of the game before competitors tackle two more loops of unrelenting terrain. Competitors like Don Thompson, who had a fairly tough prologue. Yeah, I know we headed off here this morning and everything was seemed to be going quite well and about halfway around um, I think we clipped a rock or something and broke the um, back A-arm, the rose joint in the back A-arm so yeah, the handling was a bit 
knackered after that, but anyway, we, we managed to get to the end. Bad news for Don, but good news on the recovery. No bad news for Usher and Barnes, who get the racing underway. The pair have really enjoyed a tremendous 2014 and are always competitive, no matter the size or scale of the event. The same can be said for Brooks and Gray. The duo are always tough and... Oh, but I spoke too soon. Problems on board. And it looks as if they've come to a standstill. In complete contrast, Thompson and Fast are going strong and have now climbed to second place because of Brooks and Gray's mishap. In third place, Reg Sutton and Warren Bienneker Proving that water is no match for these cars, and why not throw in some thick bush too? Well, maybe I spoke too soon, the bear. Coming to a halt. As a result, no problems for Gary and Jess Campbell. They're now up to third. Jack and Brett Peckham have really worked their way up the order. They started outside the top 10, but are incredibly in fourth position. First in class B, Marcus Taylor and Trace Price were. They were ninth fastest in qualifying, but have managed to get to fifth overall. Good news for Brooks and Gray, they're back on track, but they now find themselves fifth in class, having dropped three places. First in the clubman class, Carl van der Maver and the man we heard from earlier, Stuart Ramsey. They're certainly not lost as he predicted they would be. Lying second in class B, James Watson and Clint Brook, they'll be relying on their vast experience to go one place better. Robert Spencer and Kevin Teron are third in class B, the pair having set a time of 35 minutes and 12 seconds. Sandwiched between two other vehicles as they go through a water hazard, so to speak, is Tony Ball. Ball, as always, opting to go it alone and not make use of the benefits of a navigator, and it's put him in good stead. Not in a good place at the moment, Reg Sutton and Warren Bienneker. We caught Don Thompson and we were right in his dust. And for some reason or other, I don't know if his scream is not working, but we were about 10 meters behind him by the time we got to the stop street here. Yeah. And uh, in the dust, we never saw the sloot on the side and our car went in there and we had a head on with a tree. We came off second. Going a lot better, Brent and Lisa Snayman, who are second in the clubman class, which is the proving ground for rookies and they only complete half the distance. Rounding off the top three in that class for now, Dave and Jane Gurney. So after 50 k's, Barnes and Asher lead from the front, followed by Thompson and Foster, while the Campbells are in third spot. The welcoming sight of DSP greets competitors, giving them a well-earned but brief break while their chariots get some much-needed TLC. We had a problem with alternator earlier, but it's all Did he drop it? Plans for the second loop? Um, just do it as you can, eh? No, we're going to carry on. Yeah. Let's catch up with Jack Peckham, who had an incredible run in loop one. Nice and rough, uh, but yeah, the car's going well. Developed a little bit of a misfire, but uh, yeah, we're having, we're having great fun. And you're climbing? Yeah, we've made up a few spots, so we look forward to the next two laps. Back to business and Barnes and Asher wasting little time. They're flying out in front and utilizing all their experience to full effect. In second place in Class A, Don Thompson and Wayne Foster, they started the day third on the grid but have made up a spot. You could see the drive Jess Campbell had at DSP and it's helping her and Gary out tremendously in that third. Brooks and Gray have bounced back brilliantly from their earlier difficulties to find themselves in fourth place in Class A. On board with the pair now. 
and it looks as if their route has been blocked somewhat. Well, it proves not to be too big a problem. They're back on track. In fifth position, the Peckhams, Jack and Brett, still going strong following that superb first loop. James Watson and Clint Brook continue to lead matters in Class B. Second in class, Marcus Taylor and Trace Price were the pair enjoyed an excellent first lap, covering the route in 1 hour 6 minutes and 20 seconds. Rounding off the front three in class B, that man once again, Tony Ball. Robert Spence and Kevin Tehran sit just outside a podium place, the pair having been overtaken by Ball. Lying fifth in Class B, Rodney Curran and Roger Curran Sr. But up front, who else but Arthur Barnes and Anthony Asher, another scintillating race from the dynamic duo. Yeah, I loved it. It was challenging, but a fantastic route, and, and well done to, to the chaps who organised it, and thank you to the farmers for allowing us to, to run this event here. Thompson and Foster finished second overall, while the Campbells, Gary and Jess, were third, 12 minutes and 29 seconds off the pace. Back to the Donaldson Cross Country Championship at this time to Class P, another closely fought division where it's extremely tight at the top, and the competitors are certainly at the top of their game. Coming home in first place and third amongst the specials, the man nicknamed Maverick, Colin Matthews alongside his century racing navigator Rodney Burke. They were almost 10 minutes clear of their nearest challenger in class, John Thompson and Maurice the Matten, and their Zarko Magnum. In third place, the Kalsamite Rhino Tanks bat spec zero of John Telford and Victor Nteke. Thompson and Zamata lead the championship overall on 100 points, 9 clear of Watson and Thompson, while Matthews and Burke are third. Next month, we're at the Black Mountain Hotel in the Free State for the Debanshu 450, the seventh leg of the Donaldson Cross Country Championship. Don't miss it!